Observation. Although we observe social life every day, we're not always conscious of doing so. The purpose of this session is to show how we can use observation in a systematic way to gather data. We are always observing how people behave, and the way we behave towards them relies on us observing their behaviour. It is also a fundamental way of learning and a cornerstone of the natural sciences. Experiments and their effects are observed. Every time we observe a person, we make judgments about them. For example, uniforms can tell us about a person's role, status and function in society, as can everyday clothing. In some cases, we can tell a person's religion by their appearance. We can ask a simple question here. Would we act differently to someone in uniform telling us what to do, such as you can't park there, compared to someone who wasn't in uniform? We are not always conscious of the fact that our behaviour is governed by sets of rules which we simply accept as common sense. We can define common sense as the obvious, taken for granted, uncritical day-to-day -day knowledge of how things are, the unwritten rules for appropriate behaviour. Observing the social world allows us to see these taken for granted rules in action. What we need to do is to make the familiar everyday world our subject matter. For example, next time you are on a train or a bus, look at the way people select their seats. What are the rules at work here? Are these the same rules that help us choose where we sit in cafes and pubs, or are they different? Watch how people form queues at bus stops and in supermarkets. There are plenty of examples we could use for this, and in the next slide ask the question, how many similar rules can you identify? We can also observe how behaviour varies from place to place. In cinemas we are expected to sit quietly. At sports events we are expected to shout encouragement. Observation is often thought of as a solely qualitative research method, but it is sometimes overlooked that it often involves numbers. For example, measuring the number of people who use a particular shopping mall. There are two main types of observation, overt and covert. Overt is where people know what you are doing and there is no attempt at concealment. Covert is where people do not know what you are doing and you deliberately conceal yourself and your purpose. This is not always as cut and dried as it seems. If you are observing people in a public place, you cannot get the consent of everyone. However, this is generally not regarded as being covert as long as you explain what you are doing if asked. The real distinction here is that covert research involves deliberate concealment. As mentioned in the session on ethics, covert research involves deliberate deception. The usual rule is that observations carried out in a public setting are not unethical and do not require permission. On some occasions, covert research is justified. For example, you join an extreme political party in order to see how they function out of the public spotlight. In some cases, covert research is allowed if it is the only way to access information. However, as you will have seen in the examples in the ethics session, Covert research raises both ethical and practical issues and nowadays is rarely used. So in what situations would covert research be justified and why? The role of the observer is clearly important and can be seen in terms of a continuum that ranges from full involvement to little involvement. With full involvement, the researcher takes an active role in the situation under study which is a form of learning by doing. This is usually referred to as participant observation, or PO. Street corner society is also referenced in the other slides. It's worth looking at in terms of how he describes the process of observation. The purpose of PO is to provide rich and detailed accounts of social situations and people's lives. It is time consuming and often difficult as it requires the researcher to interact and also collect and record data. Most PO is recorded in a diary form, which are referred to as field notes, but it may also involve the use of still and video cameras. Observing actions does not explain them, so observation often involves asking people what they are doing and why. In other situations, the researcher may not get involved with the phenomenon under study, but simply watches and records what is occurring. 
These are not exclusive categories, often observational research involves both forms. This may require learning another language and another social and cultural norms and expectations, as well as asking people to explain what they are doing. Some kinds of observation work are more hands-off than others. In time and motion studies, for example, simply record what people are doing, while a traffic or pedestrian census would simply record numbers seen. So observation can be quantitative too. Generally, observations are carried out over an extended period of time in situations that are repeated, but may also include special events that occur infrequently or are unique. The purpose is to uncover patterns and regularities, the hidden rules, and this takes time. It is important to stress that observations must be carried out systematically. Once is never enough. With unique events, of course, this is not possible. They are more like a single case study. Some criticisms about observation. Observations are subjective to a degree, but this does not rule them out. While they cannot be repeated exactly, they can still reveal patterns of behaviour you can recognise in similar situations, like hues, for example. Some advantages of observation offers detailed insights into ordinary lives. It can help explain motivations and actions, and it allows us to access information that other methods cannot. In summary, there are two main types of observation, overt and covert, and covert research is only allowed in exceptional cases. Within those, we also have a continuum from passive to active involvement, as PO involves learning and asking as much as watching. And observation allows us to uncover the hidden rules of everyday behaviour.